everyone. We're Nick. And Rachel. If you're new here and haven't been following our adventures over the past year, you'll typically find us vlogging our travels all around the world. But today's video is going to be a little bit different. As we travel through various different countries, we've noticed that some things are a bit different than what we're accustomed to in Canada and the UK. The reason that we have this channel is to share our experiences of travel in the hopes of inspiring others to do the same. However, we do understand that especially for countries that people don't know, it can be a slightly worrying experience and it may be useful to be able to help with some research. And that really is the reason why we are doing these particular videos. So we are going to provide you with some tips and tricks for each of the countries that we have visited along the way. Today's video is going to focus on Singapore. If you've been watching our videos, then you will know that we went to Singapore. Singapore is not just the country, but it is also the capital city. This is a pretty small country, and just so you're aware, we were only there for a few days and we were also pretty budget conscious. So with that, you'll have to excuse our list. This is going to be a bit of a shorter list than normal. And about now, I'd usually tell you, oh, some of the pointers are going to be city specific and others are going to be country specific. Well, it's just all running together today. We hope that you find these useful all the same. Everybody who is coming to Singapore needs to complete an arrival card. The arrival cards can be completed online up to three days prior to your arrival in Singapore. The process is pretty straightforward. It only takes about 10 to 15 minutes. So just make sure that you get it done for added peace of mind. There's no additional charge to do it either. So if you are fortunate enough to come from a country that allows you visa-free entry into Singapore, then the whole process will be free. Singapore has all the Western amenities that you could possibly hope for. There is drinkable tap water, which means you can also brush your teeth with it. They have plenty of supermarkets and convenience stores, and they have a fantastic public transportation system. And for this, we're talking mainly about a metro or a subway. But the great thing about Singapore is that you can take from the airport into the center of town. It is all very affordable. Nothing is crazy expensive. And as a bonus, this is how modern it is. You can just tap your Google wallet or Apple Pay or your physical credit card. You don't need to purchase a physical ticket by that same notion, then pretty much every payment type available to humanity can be used in Singapore. The only exceptions to think about though are just your markets and your hawker centers where the expectation is that you are using cash instead. Singapore is not only a very desirable place to live for the locals, but also for foreigners who are coming in for work. Therefore, a lot of the prices are jacked up, and I think that's just worth bearing in mind if you are budget conscious and wanting to travel to Singapore. That being said, there are a lot of free activities to do in Singapore, and I feel like we really capitalized on that, so hopefully we can offer some really good advice. Firstly, walking around Marina Bay is completely free. There is a little lake or big pond and it has a really nice promenade that goes around. It takes you by a couple malls as well as the famous Merlion. Gardens by the Bay is also something that you can see for free or at least part of it. I think most people do go for the paid ticket options because there are certainly parts of it, including the two greenhouses, as well as if you wanna go up to the viewing platforms, those things all cost money. However, actually entering the super tree grove is completely free. Not only that, but walking around the city and checking out these really unique neighborhoods, including Little India and Bugis or Buji, I still haven't figured out quite the correct pronunciation for it. Those are also completely free. You can definitely find some hidden gems, especially when it comes to food in both Little India and Bugis. There are a lot of smaller restaurants that offer local foods at a very affordable price. And in Bugis, we discovered an absolutely huge hawker center. It was multi-level and they were selling traditional food. It was excellent value for money and it was so yummy. In terms of 
the kinds of food that you can get in Singapore, then it is worth noting that obviously you do have neighborhoods such as Chinatown and Little India, which do provide some of the best Indian and Chinese food that you can get outside of those respective countries. And they are well worth a look. Beyond that, then a lot of Singaporean dishes are influenced by the neighboring countries. So you will find a lot of Malaysian cuisine on offer. So the likes of mi and nasi goreng, laksa, satay, and cha kway tao are all available in most Singaporean restaurants. However, the absolute delicacies, and we were very fortunate to try a couple of these ourselves, include chili crab, Hainanese chicken rice, and what's known as fried carrot cake, which has nothing to do with carrots or cakes, but is absolutely wonderful. For those three, they are well worth a try. Like with a lot of other countries in Southeast Asia though, if all of that fails somehow, then there is always 7-Eleven and other convenience stores to help you out. Singapore does have a native population of otters that actually swims in the waters of the bay. They are very elusive though. We weren't so lucky to see any, but we heard about them. And apparently the best time to see them is at dawn. So if you fancy getting up early, on the off chance you might see an otter, you could do it. Singapore is an exceptionally clean country and that is a reputation that is globally known. However, in order to enact this, what they do have is a series of laws with very, very heavy fines that you may end up falling foul of. Things like spitting or chewing gum or singing loudly in a way that inconveniences other people are all ones that can incur a lot of money being paid to law enforcement. So with that, it is 100% worth doing your research and making sure that you are on the correct side of Singaporean law when you visit. Unlike many other countries in Southeast Asia, alcohol can be more expensive in Singapore. We're talking more along the lines of North America or Europe. So if you do want to enjoy a pint or a glass of wine or maybe a cocktail, it is worth doing a little bit of research to see where you should go so it fits your budget. One of the other amazing free things that you can do in Singapore is going to see a light show. The two most popular ones that are available are the ones at the Marina Bay and also at Gardens by the Bay in amongst the super trees. Because of their popularity, then they've actually scheduled this pretty well so that if you wanted to, you can actually see both light shows within the space of one evening. However, in terms of the vantage points, then it's better to stand in specific locations to get the best views. If you are wanting to keep things free, then just laying under the super trees, if you find it comfortable and you're able to do so, is probably one of the better things to do for the light show at Gardens by the Bay. That one lasts about 20 to 25 minutes and is really, really cool. The other one at Marina Bay, we ended up kind of choosing the wrong place to sit. We were a little bit too far away. However, the best viewing can be found in front of the mall, in front of the Marina Bay Sands Hotel, and that will give you the best view for the fountain show that happens there. Because of the popularity of both these shows though, then it is definitely worth getting there just a bit early to make sure that you get a good spot for viewing both. And that's our very short list for Singapore. We hope that our tips and tricks have been helpful so that you can apply them to your future travels. We recognize that this is not an exhaustive list, so if you have any questions or if you can contribute any more pointers, then please leave a comment below. Until next time though, take care. And keep smiling.